hey guys welcome to my youtube channel if it's the first time joining me today welcome if you are a returning subscriber an og <laughs> welcome back um in today's video like you've seen from the title we are going to talk about where forensic scientists work right and i have my notebook here my diary actually uh, where I wrote down some notes. So if you see me looking down, just know that's what's happening because I don't want to misguide you. So, um, for those of you who have watched my journey to greatness, I'll link it up here so that you guys can refer to it if you haven't watched it. Um, I talked a lot about forensic science. I did my forensic science degree at the University of Cape Town. So I did my master's in forensic science at the university of cape town by the grace of god i got a job in my second year and then i started working for a forensic science company right so because of that i felt like i was very lucky if i can put it that way no not lucky i'm blessed like hello i am blessed so um i just want to give you guys a breakdown of where forensic scientists work so the first place you can work is in the academic sector what do i mean in the academic sector this is universities right so you can work at the, the different universities that offer forensic science at um in south africa we have uct uct it has an, an honors in forensic genetics that's one thing i'm aware of it also has mphil which is a degree that i did in biomedical forensic science and we also have masters in um in toxicology and molecular forensics um and also in forensic anthropology i think uh i'd have to check that one so that is somewhere where you can study your forensic science so if you do your forensic science and then you finish it and then you can apply for a job there you can work there as a lecturer you can also work there as a, a research assistant as well i had friends who worked as research assistants also you can also work in collaboration with the with the public sector so that's what i'm coming to right so we also have uh i'd say the private sector unfortunately there isn't much of private sector in south africa where most people who do forensic science work it's um and this is this is academic and and public in a sense i don't know how to put it or where exactly this group fall it can also fall in private sector but then i'm going to explain that shortly so this one in most cases you find that it's a joint position you find that you're probably in, employed by the university of cape town and also by the western cape government for example i know a colleague of mine who works there so then you work with the with a mortuary for example you work with a mortuary um and in, in in a hospital that is so you know how we have academic hospitals and then how the university actually works with a private a public institution or a private institution so you can work like that i hope that makes sense if it doesn't please let me know um and then i know a lot of people actually work in those positions right um the other place that you can work this is the private sector but it's not it's not really forensic science kind of job that's why i remember i said that in private sector you cannot really there aren't much jobs where you can work but then in when you're working in a private sector as a forensic you're not really a forensic scientist you're more of a scientist and that's the advantage of doing um mphil biomedical forensic sciences for example because yes you are specialized in the forensics of the science however you can also work as a scientist and that's where most people end up working if they are in the private sector so now we're moving to the public sector the public sector that's where there's abundance of jobs there. like that's where i used to work um it's nice there i won't lie it's it's very nice it's very nice I'm just gonna give you guys like a short description of some of the places or some of the units that you can work at which I am aware of there's a lot of other places that I know you can work as as a forensic scientist uh, but then I'll only mention the ones that I have here so we have biology right so when you're working in biology section this is where you deal with your DNA so this is where for example if let's say a child has been raped um and then they have they have a suspect and then there is evidence of maybe there's semen on this child so that's another process like when you raped 
another process that you have to do there's a kit that is used and then they take your dna they put it into an evidence bag and then they send it to a lab if the police have um if the police have uh an, a suspect then they can take the dna suspect and then they match it with the semen that was found on the child so this is what some of the work that they do in biology um so that's where you would work as a uh, as a biologist use different equipment and different machinery uh to do that the second place you can work as a forensic scientist in public sector is chemistry so in the chemistry department what they do is that they analyze drugs so for example let's say um you are found with drugs as we know south africa has a lot of drugs people are drug dealers people take drugs so you are found with drugs the police find you with drugs and then um they take those drugs from you and then they're going to seal it in an evidence bag and they're going to take that to the forensics department right and the forensics as you as a forensic scientist in the chemistry section are going to open that bag take those drugs in you do the processes that they have that they do there um and then um analyze that you're going to determine that oh okay this is actually um it's actually methacrylone or it's mandrax or it's cocaine or whatever drug it is that you found um that this person has so the police uses that to say that this person is guilty of being in possession of drugs or this person is guilty of um of dealing so that different cases depending on what the police do or what the police have in mind and then you get arrested based on what the judge thinks so also these drugs they have different uh schedules so depending on the schedule it also determines how many years you're going to get so that's the part of the judge that's not your job uh, your job is just to analyze the drugs say what what kind of drug it is and then the rest is up to the justice system of the south african government the other one is question document now this is another interesting one this is very interesting so this is the department where they deal with fraud you know when you like sign things and then you forge people's signatures most of the the, the crimes that they deal with here it's mostly like wheels you know when someone forges someone's wheel so that they can get money and yeah they can basically inherit someone's wealth or estate or whatever um so that's another thing that they do another thing that they do in question document is that they deal with uh your your money for example let's say you um you print fake money so then you find that the police or whoever finds this fake money they're going to take this money to the forensic science department they are going to do tests that they do they have tests that they do there to determine whether this money is real or not and then they're going to write a report on that and then they leave the rest to the justice system of south africa the other one is our ballistics so with ballistics what they do now this is very interesting this, this actually this was one of my favorite courses when i was in school so with ballistics what they do is that they um they deal with guns and and you know what with all these gun things that are happening in south africa i'm just like yes there's there's so much that the police still has to do honestly because what they do is that let's say uh someone comes and they shoot me right um when they shoot me they and then i die then they take my body to the mortuary the forensic pathologist in the mortuary will take that bullet out and then will give it back to the investigating officer the investigating officer will take that bullet and take it to the forensic science lab to the ballistics section and then when they take it to the ballistic section then they're going to data they're going to use that bullet to determine um what kind of gun was used and also if the police have a suspect let's say they have a suspect they found this person with a gun they can tell that this gun is the one that uh released this bullet so that means that because we found you in the possession of this gun then that means that you are the person who shot this person that means that you are going to jail i hope you get that if you don't please comment down in the section below um yeah so that's that's how they deal with that so they work with different guns and i think it's very for me i feel like it's the most interesting 
uh, because they have like different landmarks so when you shoot a gun like for every bullet when you shoot it there's a landmark that actually comes up and with that landmark then yeah they use all these techniques it's it's quite interesting it's, it's very interesting um and then we have the lcrc so the lcrc um they're not part of the forensic science department however they how I, this is how i think it is we have south africa as a country and we have Houteng, we have western cape we have Lipopo as provinces so i think that's how it is so lcrc what they deal with is the fingerprints so let's say for example someone uh comes into your house and they break in right they are going to come do the fingerprints i actually did this course fingerprinting so there's actually a certain number of landmarks that they need to look at in that fingerprinting we did the dusting thing and then they used to compare so i think you guys and i think that you need to note in that in all this that i'm saying right there needs to be a suspect that's how they're able to know or oh okay this person did this unless if this person has committed a crime before then we can match it with a, a, a fingerprint that is already on the database for example right same thing with with the dna if there's no suspect it's actually a very hard case to actually um find who the person is because uh for example with dna our dna is a lot in the in the criminal justice system unfortunately so yeah another unit uh in the forensic science department what they do we have the victim identification center right what these people do it's it's kind of similar to what the biology section do but then this one they deal specifically with um dead people so let's say for example someone dies and they're not identified then the then uh the, the police will take the dna from this person and maybe they have family members that have been looking for their person and then uh you as a forensic scientist at the victim identification center you're going to take those those two dna samples match them if there's a match then you know that this particular individual is from that family so this they do um in people that are missing they do in people that have been banned beyond recognition they do it um in in people that that have not been identified for a while or maybe family members have haven't seen their person and they go report this to the police and that's that's the pro process that they do so another very important thing that you need to note guys if you are working for a forensic science department for example you're most likely going to be a forensic analyst that is what your job description will be you're a forensic analyst for you to call yourself a forensic scientist for so my i'll say my lecturers at the university were forensic scientists because what they do is that they do research on forensic science so if you're mostly based on research and you find ways on how to how to improve the the justice system or how to get better evidence and stuff like that then you're called the forensic scientist but then if you work in the public sector i don't know anyone who is actually a forensic scientist in the public sector because what you're doing is that you are analyzing you're not really doing research and that is the component which i believe personally like this is now my personal opinion that the government of south africa needs to implement into their system so that us can be forensic scientists and we can actually improve the way that they collect evidence improve the way that they analyze the evidence improve the way that they report evidence like that so yeah i hope you guys learned something um like i said forensic science is broad this is just like some of the things that i picked up to say that you guys uh just to explain to you guys another one bonus that i want to give you guys is the scientific analysis so what these people do they analyze things like your soil your paint let's just say for example uh you go and steal at a farm right and then you're wearing this kind of boots and then you go back home and the police know that you are the suspect they come to your house and they find those boots they take those boots they realize oh this is the kind of soil that uh is on your boots then they're going to go to that farm take that soil and then you as 
uh, forensic scientists in the scientific analysis uh, department are going to compare is this the same kind of soil that was used is it different what's the story so that's my bonus <laughs> so yeah guys if you have any further questions please remember to comment down below please dm me um yeah and i'll see you guys in my next video bye